Good evening, everyone. We're glad to have you join us tonight. A burning issue is back in the news again. <laughs> a pun, no doubt. Well, it's one of the giants in the tobacco industry. Cigarettes produce billions and thousands of jobs at Philip Morris, yet the company is not immune to criticism that its products may cause cancer, heart disease, and a host of other health problems. Today, as Jim Babb reports, tobacco critics carry their message right to the heart of the Philip Morris cigarette empire. What a place to mount an assault on the tobacco industry. Richmond is home turf for one of the biggest cigarette factories in the world. A handful of health activists who own Philip Morris stock knew full well they were vastly outnumbered this morning as they arrived for the Philip Morris annual corporate shareholders meeting. Their goal, convince the company that tobacco kills and that Philip Morris should stop producing cigarettes by the end of the decade. But any attempt to get Philip Morris out of the tobacco business runs headlong into some hard current economic realities. In 1989, despite falling U.S. consumption, Philip Morris set a new all-time record for producing and selling cigarettes. And these things are a major source of corporate profit. Tobacco generated $18 billion in revenues for Philip Morris last year. I've had this Philip Morris stock for 30 years. It always comes up. Shareholders listened politely, then voted down the anti-tobacco proposals by margins of about 97 percent. Houston physician Alan Blum was one of the outvoted shareholders. They're pretty much admitting that they have no social responsibility. Their commitment is to sell cigarettes, and uh, they're going to, I think, have dug their own grave today. There's a lot of fuss about something here on, on cigarettes, which is really un difficult sometimes for us to understand when the business is not just legal in the United States in terms of manufacturing, selling and consuming the product, but in every single country in the world. Richmonder Dorothy Burton voted to keep Philip Morris in tobacco, but admits she had mixed feelings. Do you think tobacco is a harmful product? I do. Why do you think Philip Morris then is staying in the business? Because it is a money-making business. We'll be back. I mean, we haven't been uh, heard from uh, for the last time here. Jim Babb, Channel 12 News, Richmond. A little background now. Philip Morris started producing cigarettes in Richmond in 1929, and corporate executives are always eager to discuss the company's impact on the local economy. It is a huge impact. Philip Morris is Richmond's largest private employer. 11,000 people are on the Philip Morris workforce here alone, and the annual payroll is $538 million. Tobacco profits enabled Philip Morris to buy General Foods in 1985 and buy Kraft Foods in 1988. Now, more than half of Philip Morris revenues come from the non-tobacco products. Mm -hmm. 